Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another week in astrology. Um, so we are really revving through Virgo season. Um, I feel like things are moving very fast this season and Mercury is not stopping for nobody. Um, and <laughs> this is a very Mercury charged season. So lots of ideas, lots of um, conversations, uh, especially long ones. Um, just connecting to people. Usually it's people familiar to you with Mercury, but maybe you're having more plans than normal, especially with uh, Venus going with Venus and a good spot too with Mercury. They're sextiling each other. And so there's a lot of connections that we have right now. Lots of phone calls, um, you know, lots of uh, activity, um, things of that nature. And we need to remember that Virgo season wants us to slow down. You know, it wants us to work hard when we're at work, but when we're off the clock, we really take that time for ourselves. You know, we really find rest. We, we maybe, you know, use our imagination, whether you're exploring a new book, um, you know, you're into a new TV series or something of that nature. And uh, maybe you're connecting to nature more. Maybe you're exercising more. Those are all things very Virgo oriented, um, you know, and it allows us to create space for our own personal world, um, you know, because we're so tapped into the normal world with that earth energy. And so it, it I think Virgo is this unique sign that it does give you the capacity to dream and to uh, like wish for things. Um, and I think with Pisces being opposite it, you know, that's that's why they can actually be very creative and maybe a little weird um, at times too, um, because they can have like these deep fantasies. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's, it is tiring. I can honestly say like, I feel like the work has really picked up um, for myself and the people around me, um, I, everybody is back to work or in school or both. And, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's a lot more productive of a season. And so, um, you know, and so it's very important to listen to your body. Um, that's really key with the earth signs. You know, what is it telling you? Are you too tired? Are you sore? Um, you know, are you hydrated enough? Um, you know, really, really keep that in focus too. So notice the little things, you know, Virgo season wants you to do that. Um, and speaking of the little things, we have, you know, Mars representing, you know, little tiny Aries. Um, Mars is going retrograde and it already has started that process. Um, I believe it was yesterday, maybe Wednesday. Um, and, you know, we talked about this last week in astrology and then just, you know, what we really are going to see is that slowdown. So that's why starting this video, that's what's so important. You know, we can't do it all. Um, sure, Mercury and Venus um, wants to, uh, you know, wants to have fun, wants to be very social, keep the connections going, uh, maybe even date a little, but um you know, we really just don't have the energy, you know, we don't have the, the feeling, you know, when we wake up in the morning to take on the day, um, it's a lot more of a gradual kind of rise. And so, you know, especially the Aries or people that have Aries big in their chart, um, are going to be feeling this kind of the most, um, because that's your ruling planet, you know, and so always look to your ruling planet for indications of what's really going on. Um, or if you're a little stumped as to, you know, what it is you're feeling, you know, ruling planet's a good indication usually. Um, but yeah, Mars retrograde, I think, um, myself included, a lot of astrologers, we always see, especially in this heated political climate, like, maybe the possibility of some kind of militarization, but I'm like, what more could Trump do really, you know, with the National Guard coming out earlier this year? Um, and, you know, so I would stay a little more optimistic as to what that means. Um, 
And really, like, I feel like a lot of this stay home stuff is very Mars retrograde in nature. Um, you know, we really can't get out of the house. We don't have that uh, sense of adventure um, that we do with the fire energies when they're moving the right way. Um, you know, we don't have that tenacity to do as much as we did when the world was running smoothly like this time last year. Um, and so that can be very frustrating. You know, we can get, you know, we're more prone to like headaches and, um, you know, anger, fights, things like that when it goes retro because those bad qualities attached to the energy of that planet tend to surface a little more. Um, as opposed to when it's moving forward, you know, and again, those fire sign energies, they, they want to continually move forward. Um, now, luckily, we are going to talk about this a little bit. Jupiter is coming in and is saying it's not all bad. Um, I'm going direct and there's a really big reason, you know, to be optimistic about Jupiter going direct right now. So we're going to get into that. Um, so starting off the weekend, we have Friday. Uh, the moon is going to be in Cancer for most of the weekend, and then it gets some Leo energy on Sunday. Uh, the moon likes Cancer energy. I will say the problem with that right now is with the concentration of planets in Capricorn, and now with Mars and Aries and Mercury and Libra, every cardinal sign moon which is either Aries, Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn, is going to have a tough effect on us because those cardinal signs are where we're seeing kind of the most concentrated, hard energy to work with. I mean, almost all those planets are in retrograde, um, but especially that Capricorn stuff and recently Mars, you know, any aspects to that, you know, we really want to look at and, and be very cautious about. So, yeah, um, that is to say that, you know, this isn't going to be the most enjoyable weekend. Um, you know, a lot of family time when we see Moon and Cancer, which can be helpful, you know, especially if we're tired, if we just want to relax on the couch or at home, not do a lot. Um, that's great for that, you know, have some good food, um, you know, cook something, but it's not, cancer isn't a very active sign, you know, it's water, it moves very slowly, um, and it's more in tune with its emotion, and so when we're focused on our emotional selves, you know, we're not as focused on um, the productivity or where we're going, you know, we're really kind of sitting with ourselves in a deeper way and seeing, um, you know, maybe our problems, our hurt, our pain up close. So those water signs do slow us down, but in a very necessary way. Um, it allows us to glimpse inside of our psyche, our inner world, if you will, and to kind of um, almost like unpack it a little bit, you know, to understand like, why do I get these feelings or these intuitions? Um, you know, and I just can't always make sense of them. You know, when we have the water energy, it's very mysterious. It's, it's very hidden. It's not necessarily of this world. And so it's kind of like the ocean, you know, we still don't know everything that's down there. It's, it's very much a mystery to us still. And it holds a lot of fears for a lot of people because you can't see the bottom. You can't see through it. It's not transparent. Um, you know, and so that secrecy, that that kind of nature uh, really rubs people the wrong way. Um, unless you're a water sign, I feel like, you know, it's more so your your way of moving through. You know, you're not as scared of, of that stuff. Um, maybe because you've had to deal with your fears in a lot more of a, um, at a younger age, you know, and you've, you've had to move through a lot more challenges um, growing up and yeah, so Moon and Cancer is really about, you know, connecting with those people that you really love and that are there for you, um, you know, whether it's it's literal family or just the people that you live with. Um, so expect some, some time with them this weekend. And, you know, just watch out for those, those squares. Um, the first one will be Moon and Cancer squares Mercury. So it seems like, like I said, Mercury is not slowing down for anybody. It's, um, 
I, I think it's refreshing, but it's also problematic when Mercury is always out in front because it gives us mixed signals. It's not, um, it wants to say everything, but then in the next sentence, it'll, it'll go against what it just said. And so it can be very confusing when we're mer working with Mercury energy. I think the individual that is more Mercury heavy understands what's going on, but when it comes to other people, maybe they're not as secure as to like, why did they say that? And then they said that. And if you really don't understand what devil's advocate means, um, and you're constantly confused by a Gemini or Mercury out there, or a Gemini or a Virgo out there, <laughs> please look into that. Um, cause that's a lot of what they do. They're trying to figure out things through conversation and that's taking different vantage points and seeing different sides. And that's very error oriented. Um, they like to understand other people's perspectives to get more perspective for themselves. And, you know, and so it can rub people the wrong way because our natural energy is fire energy. It is our sun. That's why our sun is so important. It shows us our birth date. It's where it all begins. Um, and that's very passionate. You know, there is pride attached to everything when we look at our sun sign and um, how we view ourselves and, you know, our way in the world, basically. And so that air energy can rub people the wrong way because it's so different. It doesn't like to be um, really attached to itself for like almost like selfish reasons. It's more about the group, the collective. Um, and so, you know, I think it does take an extra moment to recognize that air and water, I think are the most, the most least understood, <laughs> um, in my opinion, I really think so. So, but anyways, yeah, moon and cancer squaring Mercury, there's going to be some challenging conversations, um, with the people that you live with this weekend, uh, it could even be over dinner. Um, but something, you know, that's just pushing you to see through a different lens, um, that Mercury, you know, understands someone else's emotions, um, maybe even their past with their family, um, things of that nature, but squares, you know, while they seem like impossible to work with, you know, they do, um, eventually strengthen us. They're just, you know, very tough energy, um, that 90 degrees angle that they make with each other. You know, if you, if you think about it, when you look at like 90 degrees, um, I feel like I always see it going up. And if we're going up, that means that we actually are getting better, but that can be a hard journey. It's like climbing a ladder. And, um, you know, it can be scary. You can feel like you're not supported at first. Um, you know, like, is it possible? You don't want to look down. Um, so there's definite fear involved, but you know, that process and getting to the top is very rewarding. And so squares actually push us to achieve more, to, um, strengthen ourselves by working with energy that, um, doesn't necessarily mix well with us at first. Um, but we do find some correlation, something that benefits us through the process. Um, so that's one good thing about those. Uh, and then the moon, you know, like I said, the moon is really going through that tough stuff this weekend with the cardinal energy. Moon squaring Chiron, which is in Aries. Um, so Cancer and Aries square each other naturally. Um, so Chiron is really the healer, you know, that asteroid that represents our deep hurt and pain, um, you know, and so the moon, like squaring that is going to give us a moment of like, kind of wallowing into um, where we've recently been hurt, um, you know, and where that came from, like a fight, some kind of argument, you know, Aries, um, you know, maybe where we didn't stand up for something, you know, where we didn't um, really like rebel or we didn't like fight something that we felt like we should have. Um, things of that nature I feel like could show up for you Friday and it may even very well have to do with what starts out with um, that conversation at home, Mercury um, squaring the moon and then shifting to Chiron. Um, so there may be some actual healing through that, through that, you know, 
trying to understand everyone's vantage point, um, talking it out is very helpful. Um, you know, it's we're moving into a less physical because Mars is going into retrograde and so we feel like we can exert a lot of force when Mars is moving regularly, especially when it's in Aries like it has been. Um, but we're slowing that down now. There's less of us going out and like, you know, pushing our way through the world. We are actually, you know, kind of taking a back seat right now. It's almost like someone else is in the driver's seat. We could even say that Mercury is driving right now, which would make a lot of sense. Um, and we're kind of like the little kid that's being shown our past and where we've grown up. And, um, you know, maybe even there's some trauma there associated with your childhood and um, those are things that come up when Mars goes into retrograde because Mars represents your youth, your birth. Um, so it may be even taking you all the way back to like your origins, like finding family history or, um, you know, learning about stories when you were really young, you know, things of that nature. And so uh, retrogrades are super important because they allow us to look at our wounds in a deeper way um, to make sure that they're actually healing and um, you know that we're giving them the necessary attention you know because we put a lot in the back of our minds and retro is like bringing it all forward again and so most people have a challenge with dealing with that and that's why retrogrades affect people or there's stigmas that they're negative um, because they literally do feel that the energy shifts in a way that they can't use it as much, which is what they're all about. Um, and most people's charts, I think, have less retrogrades than not. Um, I could say for myself, I'm one of the few or, or the few charts that I've seen that I'm overwhelmed with retrogrades. And so I feel like slowing down or not being understood or being able to um, kind of move through the world in the way that I envision is a lot harder for myself, um, you know, and so retrogrades actually don't impact those people that have them in their charts um, as much. And so if you have Mars in retrograde in your birth chart, um, this isn't as scary for you. Um, you know, it's, it's not the scariest thing in general, um, but it is almost like a reset because Mars is in its very first sign, its strongest sign, Aries. And so it's almost like starting this new chapter as it's gonna move through the, um, the next signs once it goes direct again. And, um, you know, we just hope for good things with that. We hope that we become empowered, you know, that we don't just accept our fate with, you know, what's happening in politics, that we can really rewrite some of this stuff and, and tap back into that kind of Pluto energy that we had um, over the summer, or like late spring, where the Black Lives Matter movement started, the trans lives, um, you know, and, and just really putting all that into our face to see the corruption, you know, to to a point to where it's, it's not ignorable for people that just have just doubted the validity of all of that for so long. Um, so I think, you know, Mars is going to give us one last look at the past in a big way. Um, that's a big thing for cardinal signs. And, you know, kind of where we've come to, maybe even America's birth. Um, and so we're getting another glimpse of that history, I think, to supercharge us to be a lot more knowledgeable um, in this election time period. And I feel like once it goes direct again, you know, we'll have like that, that one last fight or whatever it is that's going to determine who wins or who gets the, you know, the seat. Um, so yeah, so I can feel like I'm very, very slow today, you know, resting into that moon and cancer, um, you know, Virgo season on top of that, it's, it's very much about not being loud and boisterous and, um, you know, not as emotive, um, things like that. So I can feel the slowdown for sure. <laughs> Mars retro. Okay. So Saturday, the moon is going to be opposing Jupiter. Um, and this is kind of like the last thing that's happening with Jupiter before it goes direct. Um, 
actually, Jupiter already went direct, guys. <laughs> so, or at least by Saturday. Ugh. Okay, so just like with Jupiter energy, it's very hard to pinpoint sometimes. I feel like it's very mistake prone. So you Sages out there that can resonate with that. Um, you know, like it's, it's never quite what you plan or expect. And so that's why they have this beautiful sense of optimism um, because I feel like a lot of their lives and things that they do just don't come out as intended. And so they just kind of roll with the result, you know, and just like, sure, that's what I meant to do. <laughs> just laugh it off and, um, yeah, just kind of almost change the direction or the energy. And that's very much that mutable energy associated with the planet. So Jupiter direct is a big one because Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system. Um, you know, it's not the biggest star or energy out there. That's the sun. Um, nobody's going to show Leo up, but you know, Jupiter is very well supported in where it's at. And I feel like the deep talk of this weekend is um, Jupiter is the first of those big three in Capricorn that is going direct. Now they're still all in conjunction. That means that they're all still within a few degrees of each other and that they're all working together on kind of transforming the world. Capricorn is all about politics, government, legal affairs. Um, it could even like rule marriages too, because those are legal unions, technically, you know, it's of the law. Um, and so we're seeing, you know, society at large really transform in new ways. And right now we're kind of like a lot less optimistic about it because, you know, staying at home, working at home is a lot more challenging than it at first seemed. Um, we are doing much better with our health that we're wearing masks, we're, we're thinking about our hygiene more, we are social distancing, you know, we are prioritizing our health and um, the health of others, you know, for the first time in a while. And I feel like a big plus side of that is seeing, being thankful for something that's that Jupiter energy is finding things to gratify um, is not being sick. Like I can't remember the last time I've had like a common cold. And that's because when we go out into the world, we're wearing masks. We are, you know, these practices are actually keeping our bodies at a good immune level. Um, you know, there's not as much entering into them from other people and stuff. And so that's a plus, you know, that's kind of nice to not have to be Sick, you know, unless um, you get the big one, which, um, you know, hopefully like that doesn't affect you in, in a really bad way to where you have to be hospitalized, you know, but you really can't know how it's going to affect you until it does. And so really, really um, don't take that risk. You know, Virgo season um, is all about, you know, health and, you know, let that let the lessons that you learn now and the information that sticks with you now follow you because we don't we still don't know how long this is going to end or this is going to take and um you know any risk is too risky of a risk <laughs> so you know it's it's just something that you don't want to gamble with you know i know jupiter is all about the gamble and taking chances but um, this is one area of your life that you shouldn't, you know, especially when you think about how it can affect other people around you. Um, you know, you just don't want to be that person. So Jupiter going direct, bringing in some optimism, bringing in things for us to be thankful for. Uh, maybe you have had accomplishments, um, you know, getting work, you know, Jupiter and Capricorn is, is getting good work for yourself. Maybe finding a role that suits you well, that allows you some room to um, create, to um, explore, you know, not maybe physically, but at least mentally, philosophically, you know, you're we're finding work that is a little more um, almost playful to a way, or it could be more school related. Um, you know, Jupiter rules over higher learning. And so we're trying to find innovative ways when we look at Jupiter and, um, you know, ways to improve things. You know, Jupiter is a really great 
um, energy and astrology, you know, it usually amplifies for the better when we look at it in the chart. Um, so if you see Jupiter close to like, you know, your Venus, then that means you have success and love and probably marriage and um, could even be like long distance because Sagittarius is all about travel and things like that. Or maybe you have a second home, Venus rules possessions. And so Jupiter is benevolent energy is what we call it. Um, and so it's something that is mostly of a positive nature. Um, you know, and, and just, I think the only thing with Sagittarius is just be aware of things not being perfect because there's a tendency to, to make mistakes, but to learn from the mistakes. There's some optimism from those. Um, but to also just like laugh at yourself and to, um, just not take things as seriously. You know, that's a very rule for Jupiter. And so I feel like it going direct is going to allow us to breathe a little bit, to not feel as like, you know, so worried and anxious about everything. I know when Mercury is moving very fast, it's hard not to tap into that. Um, I had a bout of that yesterday where I was just like, I just couldn't like stop doing things and I was like, oh, this is not good, but I couldn't get in front of it. And um, it was a Gemini moon and that's a big one for me. Um, but yeah, Jupiter allows us to almost experience some lightheartedness, um, you know, because we're seeing a bigger scope. And there's something enjoyable about that because it gets us out of that detail-oriented mindset where we're nitpicky. So it's a good balance almost in Virgo season to have Jupiter going direct because it's like, yeah, sure, it doesn't look perfect, but, you know, we did what we set out to do. I'm happy about that. And, you know, it was pretty enjoyable. So things of that nature um, we can find. And yeah, so maybe giving us maybe even a little more energy at work um, or adventurous. Maybe you're taking on projects that you didn't know existed or you're working with someone new that is in a different area of your company or something of that nature that allows you some movement um so you're not you're not feeling as stagnant um now jupiter is the first of uh jupiter saturn and scorpio that's going direct and i feel like once we see all of those as well as uranus out of retro and Mars out of retro come Aquarius season. Yes, I still know that's a little bit away. That's end of January, beginning of February next year. That's what I have high hopes for with us really going into the future um, in a much newer way. You know, retrograde season has been very drawn out this year. I don't feel like it usually lasts this long, um, but it's every one of these planets has kind of been on its own movement and I feel like what they're doing now is they're all getting their most concentrated energy and it's a full scope effect and it's almost like we're cleansing ourselves of each sign of each planetary energy preparing us for something much bigger um, when we can utilize it all come the new year and you know especially Capricorn season I mean that one's coming up and that's where all of these are playing out right now um, before they move into Aquarius. And I feel like Capricorn is like the last big challenge, you know, the last hurdle you have to overcome before winning the trophy, before claiming the prize, before, you know, whatever it is, adding to your resume. Um, and, you know, it's, it's honestly one of the toughest. Um, you know, they're symbolized by you know, like, I feel like trees and, like, goats. <laughs> I feel like Taurus is more mountains, but you can also see goats on mountains, and so there's some, there's something there, but it's more about the ability to climb. It's less about the actual mountain. Um, it's more about the person achieving something that they thought they couldn't do, um, just from, like, sheer perseverance and ambition and um, maybe a little cunning here and there too. Um, and so that's what we're really seeing is, is how can we push our world farther? And Capricorn isn't the most direct energy. Um, you know, the earth signs can be very passive and 
so they don't they don't put everything out there you know there is some there's always some back pedaling maybe there's some meetings that don't include the whole company um so you may feel like a little left out like there's something bigger going on um but ultimately you know it's about the earth it's about society it's about government the systems in place the things that keep us running that keep the days going that keep us working towards things and so we're recreating what it is that we can achieve in the biggest way possible which is the world and so we're seeing this huge huge transformation here and um, I didn't really even mean to talk about all that but it's just such a big thing to be watching it play out right now um, it's it's one of those that just it needs constant kind of attention to understand it more and more and to understand the implications of it you know that this isn't something that happens every few years this is a really really unique cosmic event and one that is going to alter the way that we live um and we we don't know what that fully entails but you know try to start getting used to things being changed for good you know if you didn't feel like we really needed big changes in this world um i have to say that you know maybe you were a little doubtful or maybe pessimistic or um i know there's some people out there that especially when it comes to politics have just been a little ignorant like this is just not working you know um and so <laughs> that's why it's so hard because it really it plays into every part of life um you know and that's how we live our day it's it's li the literal time you know it's it's grandfather time and it's um it feels like a force that holds power over you you know in tarot it's the devil card and um you know it's 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 hard <laughs> it's hard you know because you feel like you can almost never overcome it there's very few that i feel like um not can stand up to it i feel like a lot of people can um but to get out in front of it to oppose it um is very challenging because capricorn is very connected it's very resourceful it knows who to use for what um it's kind of like this ultimate manager of sorts you know have you guys ever seen the lego movie i feel like there's a really good capricorn character and the anti well he's not anti-hero is the villain um and he's like mr business or something like that and he you know <laughs> is all about keeping things in place and he's using crazy glue to do that because legos you know you can come apart at any time you pull them apart and he doesn't like that that ability to adapt or to innovate which is what a lot of the characters are doing they're making like these crazy shapes and worlds out of legos and he's like no that doesn't look right or no um that's not the way it looks on the box and so you know capricorn is very much trying to micromanage everything that we're doing um and this is our first chance that we really have the ability to rise above that and be like no we are capable of managing ourselves and creating things that you've never even dreamed of you know we're you're not keeping us imprisoned in this world anymore that's aquarius energy is bursting forth it's allowing us to see through the veil to see that this is the way we've all been like programmed or engineered to work with society and it just it isn't right anymore it isn't working um it doesn't feel good um you know and and there's less room to grow you know we've we've kind of seen it all at this point and capricorn is that last little um push you know that we have to get through and it takes a lot you know for it to realize that like wow like these people really mean business they're not just going to let me do my usual thing here where i oppress i oppress i oppress i give them rules restrictions 
and I pressure them to just conform. Um, you know, we're not doing that anymore. This is a new world. This is a new whatever. And um, the old world is really going goodbye in, in a big way. And I don't mean that to scare anybody, but I'm hella ready for it. I've like, I've been wanting to ride around in spaceships already. Um, you know, being a kid and watching sci-fi movies and stuff. And I'm like, man, a lot of like Blade Runner, I think we were supposed to already be in like um, flying cars by like year 2010 or something like that in Blade Runner. I'm like, man, I bet the science is there, but is like, you know, are all these governments and stuff allowing it to like really excel or to do those things at the pace that it wants it to? Because we know the innovation is there. We know the the people are there building these things and dreaming up the future um, and stepping into Aquarius. And I feel like 2021 is really going to be a big catapult to start seeing where we can possibly go and, you know, kind of almost how much time we've spent holding ourselves back. And, you know, that takes a lot to realize and people are going to be blind or ignorant to that, uh, you know, as much as they can up to the very last second. And so it's going to take a lot of patience. Um, but we know that there are great things out there for us. And um, we're seeing strength in numbers. That's very Aquarius energy is, you know, we're not alone. You know, we may feel it at times, especially in stay home times. Um, and when the streets look empty and, you know, you can't go to the same things like you used to, but we're not, we're all going through this, um, and we're just trying to protect ourselves in the meantime. So yeah, um, I might as well just end it there. I know I didn't go super deep into all of the tiny moon aspects, uh, wrapping it up, moon and Leo on Sunday, Leo, or the moon will be... I'm sorry, the sun is trining Jupiter, allowing for us to really see ourselves um, in a better light and maybe giving us some more of that warmth as, as Mars flame dies out a little bit, um, kind of balancing that out a little bit. Moon and Leo, you know, isn't like the best placement for the moon. You know, the moon really loves being in Cancer, um, you know, but Cancer can rock people the wrong way a lot of the times too because it's water nature and um it wants to be productive and keep doing all the chores but it has to find rest too and so that could be the challenge this weekend is like you know just surrendering to the couch and um just taking some time sleeping in um things like that and then leo maybe there's some creativity that sparked like sunday sunday night maybe going into monday um it's kind of nice to start off the week with Leo energy, give us a little fire to take on, I think the last week of full Virgo energy, maybe, maybe. Um, and then the Virgo new moon is happening Thursday. So really big one for those, that new work that we were talking about with Jupiter, that's a perfect alignment there. It's like new responsibilities, uh, maybe even a new position, like promotion at work. Um, but yeah, just balancing it out with with hobbies and interests and relaxation um, and health is super important. Please think about your health first and foremost right now. Um, yeah, so that's all I got for you guys. Um, I know it was very much more like <laughs> diminished energy today, but um, still think some really big things you know, are happening out there that are keeping us optimistic for the future. Just hang on. Um, I can't say it's going to be the most exciting holiday season, but, you know, there's always some magic to it. Um, and yeah, just keep on working and take your breaks. You've earned them and you deserve them and they're there for you. Bye.